Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Eric Candy. Here today we're back on PTCGO taking a look at another Unbroken Bonds deck. And today we have one for the expanded format. It's going to be the new Greninja and Zoroark GX Tag Team. And specifically, this video was selected by one of our patrons, Chris Campbell, over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So depending on how much our patrons decide to pledge to us, uh, one of the perks is they actually get to choose topics for us to create videos on. So Chris here wanted to see the new Greninja Zor arc in Expanded, so that's what we have here. So if you guys do want to learn more about how to have a bigger say over the types of content that come out on this channel and also help support us in the process, I will have a link down below in the description for you guys to check out. But getting back to the video at hand today, this is, uh, you know, a deck I was actually kind of looking forward to experimenting with and expanded. It's very reminiscent of the old Turbo Dark deck that ran Darkrai EXs and things like that. But of course, now we have the new Greninja Zoroark to take its place. And this card, I think, is much better suited to the expanded format for this reason uh, than the standard one. So let's take a look at it. This is, of course, the main attacker of the deck here, the new Greninja and Zoroark GX. So the reason we're playing this over something like the old Darkrai is because, first of all, we're a 250 HP basic, whereas the old Darkrai only has 180 HP. And then the attack is also a bit stronger. Same attack, Dark Pulse, but the old Darkrai was 20 plus 20, and this one's 30 plus 30 for each uh, Dark Energy attached to all of our Pokemon. So it's a pretty straightforward deck, guys. We're just trying to swarm as much energy as possible onto the field and just take big one-hit knockouts. So it's almost kind of like the... Rayquaza GX that we have, but of course we're a bit tankier, and this is going to be for uh, dark Pokemon, or dark energy specifically, I should say. And we do have a GX tag, but honestly it's pretty irrelevant in this deck, so we're not even going to spend too much time on it. Now, of course, the big downside to Greninja Zork is the fact that it is a tag team, which means we are going to be giving up three prizes at a time, which is definitely annoying, especially when we have a fighting weakness. This is, I think, one of the things that might end up holding this deck back is the fact that a deck like Hitmonchan can just so easily deal with an attacker like this. And uh, you know what? I I'm just not sure if uh, the weakness is going to be too good for this card. So that is the major downside to Greninja Zork that we have. So looking at the rest of the deck, we have a bunch of different supporting Pokemon uh, to kind of round out this deck idea. A couple different Darkrai's. We are playing the old Darkrai EX, the original one, all the way back from Dark Explorers. Just for this Dark Cloak ability, says each of our Pokemon that have Dark Energy attached to them have no retreat cost. So this is pretty nice at cycling through Greninja Zoroarks without having to discard our energy whenever we want to do so. Night Spear also sometimes is a half decent attack, believe it or not, uh, especially against like low HP basics. Night Spear actually is kind of good. So 90 and then 30 snipe to bench. You're not going to use it too often, but like I said, it is a half decent attack against very specific decks out there. Think things like Vespaquin or Night March, just as an example. Um, but yeah, primarily we're just using this guy for this ability. And we're playing two Darkrai GX as well. So this is the GX one back from Burning Shadows. And we're playing it for this ability Restoration. So if this Pokemon is in our discard pile, we can put it onto our bench and attach a Dark Energy from discard to this Pokemon. So this is especially pretty cool in the expanded format where we still have things like Battle Compressor. We can just compress our way Darkrai immediately and then get it right back out with this ability and get an extra energy into play in the process it basically reads plus 30 damage <laughs> when you use this ability, uh, which is really nice. Uh, also, we do have the option of attacking with this, of course, but neither of these attacks are going to be too relevant most of the time. Um, specifically, Dead End GX is kind of a dead attack in this uh, in this deck. Though I do want to point out, I was thinking you could potentially run like one Hypnotoxic Laser in this list if you wanted to potentially try to abuse this uh, GX attack. So just want to quickly point that out. That is something I do want to try out as well. Let's see. We have one copy of Eveltal. So Eveltal is kind of an old staple for dark decks at this point. Uh, but we're playing it for this Oblivion Wing attack, 30, and then attach a dark energy from discard to one of your bench Pokemon. So the issue that I've run into with Zor Arc Ninja is that even though by like the mid game, you pretty much have a constant amount of energy in play to take one hit knockouts. The issue is early on that maybe on your first turn, if you're going second, a lot of times you won't really scale to do the types of damage uh, that you really want to, especially against other basic GXs and tag teams. So Evaltal is kind of a nice early game attacker against these different decks that 
Uh, typically, you can't one-shot on the first turn. Also, too, I really do like this card as a potential out against things like Hitmonchan, uh, just because we're actually resistant to fighting, and we can one-shot everything in their deck uh, with a Fighting Fury belt, outside of, like, uh, like Baby Buzzwell, just as an example. But we can knock out all of the core Pokemon in the deck, like Hitmonchan's and Wobbuffet's, if we have a Fighting Fury belt on this Eveltal. So this kind of serves like a dual purpose for that reason as well. Uh, let's see, from there we have one copy of Mr. Mime for that bench barrier ability. It's going to be really good against things like Picaram, that way they can't uh, tag bolt us as easily. Also, of course, for things like Magikarp Waylord, that way they can't towering splash like a bunch of bench Pokemon. Uh, we have one copy of Sudowoodo. We are a Skyfield based deck, so Roadblock is going to be a very, very good ability here to ensure that we can have kind of like a one-sided Skyfield a lot of the times. So it's going to limit their bench to four and they will have to discard down to four if they do have more than that in play already. And then from there, we just have a couple of different draw support Pokemon. We have one copy of the new Dedenne GX. Of course, for that ability, it's gonna allow us to discard our hand and draw six. So this is pretty nice, especially in those like turns where you might wanna Shaman normally, but you have a bunch of energy in hand and you can't really play down your hand very much to draw a lot of cards with setup. Uh, Dead A Change is going to be a much stronger ability. So we're playing one of this guy for those types of situations. Uh, we have one copy of Marshadow, of course, for that Let Loose ability, just to have both players shuffle in and draw four. Uh, so not only it, can this help us kind of set up and dig a little bit deeper, but of course, it's also a disruption card. And then two copies of Shaman EX to round out the list for that setup ability lets us draw until we have six cards in our hand. This can allow us to dig and really go aggressive on the early turns of the game to make sure we can get a lot of energy into play with our Greninja Zora arcs. So going on to our supporters, we have a couple of you know staples for the expanded format. Three Sycamore, one N, one Colorist. Those are going to be our primary draw supporters here. Just a couple of refreshers if you guys are kind of newer to the expanded format. Sycamore is a discard and draw seven. So very good with this deck since we are getting energy out of the discard pile and we're primarily an all basic deck. So Sycamore really is traditionally been good in all basic decks. Uh, we have one copy of N. So both players are gonna shuffle their hand into their deck, draw equal to amount of prize cards they have left. And then we have one copy of Colrus, just shuffle our hand into our deck and draw equal to amount of bench Pokemon both players have in play. So we are a Skyfield based deck, and if both players have an entire full bench of eight, we can shuffle and draw 16. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often, guys, but it's a very powerful card in these types of decks. Then we have one copy of Guzma. This is actually a card I would like to increase to a second count of, but just kind of having trouble finding the space for the second copy. Uh, but at the very least, definitely want to play one of this guy. So we get to switch, of course, what our opponent's active is going to be. And, uh, you know, we do play Battle Compressor, so that's one reason I don't mind the one count, because we can compress her the one away to always get back out of the discard pile with Versus Seeker at different points in the game. And then from there, one copy of Acerola as well. So Acerola definitely going to be good in Tag Team deck since Tag Teams usually are going to be a little bit difficult to take one-hit knockouts on unless you're hitting for weakness. So Acerola is going to be really good at denying those key knockouts and uh, just making sure our Greninjas kind of go to the distance. So we have four Verse Seekers, of course, like I mentioned, to reuse all of these different supporters. We have a couple of other staples, four Ultra Ball, one Nest Ball. These are going to be our primary search options. Ultra Ball specifically is going to be good in this deck too, just because we can pitch away Dark Red GX, we can pitch away Dark Energies, and just get them out. Uh, specifically with Dark Patch, if you guys are unfamiliar with Expanded, this has definitely been uh, one of the most powerful uh, Dark Support cards uh, ever since it's been printed. So we attach a Dark Basic Energy from Discard to one of our Bench Dark Pokemon. So of course we can compress our way some energies, discard them with Ultra Ball, Sycamore, and get them back to do you know, more damage with our Greninjas or Urks. But in addition to that, we're also playing four copies of Max Elixir as well. So we're going all in on getting these energies into play. Uh, Max Elixir is kind of the opposite effect. Instead of getting energies out of the discard, we're getting them from deck. We get to look at the top six of our deck and attach a basic we find there to one of our benched basic Pokemon. So then we have one copy of Dowsing Machine. This is going to be our ace spec of choice. We discard two cards from hand and then get a trainer from our discard back into our hand. So I'm um, opting to play this over something like Computer Search, though I think Computer Search is a completely valid option in here as well. 
uh, just so that we can reuse things like max elixirs, dark patches, uh, even maybe some of our stadiums. This actually sometimes is like a fifth versus seeker, which can sometimes be nice, especially since we only are playing the one Guzma in here as well. So right now I am favoring the dowsing machine, though like I said, computer search I definitely think is perfectly fine as well. Uh, let's see, we also have four battle compressors. So search a deck for up to three cards and discard them. So early on we want to see these to pitch away dark energies, uh, darker GXs, also some of those one-up supporters like Guzma, Acerola just as an example. So compressor just makes a ton of sense in a deck like this. Uh, we have two copies of Fighting Fury Belt. This is I think the tool card that I am most happy about. I've tried a couple different ones in here but I keep kind of going back to this one. So if it's attached to a basic, they get plus 40 HP and they do 10 more damage. So we really want to make sure these Greninja's or Arcs just kind of stay in play and can tank a couple hits while they're getting some knockouts. And of course, we do 10 more damage as well. Did have choice bands in here uh, just to maybe help hit better numbers against Pikaram. That was, you know, I think a number I was kind of coming up short with with Fury Belt was the 240 number. So Choice Band is going to be, I think, a little bit better in that matchup. But also, there's situations where Belt is actually good there, too, just because you can, like, put Belts on things to where Tag Bolt can't knock, the, knock them out sometimes. Uh, but I think Fighting Fear Belt just generally serves the most utility, especially over something like Wishful Baton or EXP Share. You know, you're keeping your Greninjas and Zorax alive longer, which means you're keeping energy in play. So it kind of fills both the role of Choice Band and, like, the energy preserving tools as well so this is kind of my favorite tool right now and especially because it will allow us to uh, take one hit knockouts with uh, the baby eveltal against uh, wabafets and the hitmonchan decks that's another reason why i do like the belt here and i believe the last of our trainer cards are going to be our stadiums so we're playing three copies of skyfield each player can have eight pokemon on his or her bench so this is going to be really good for those early aggressive turns where Ideally, turn one, we throw down Skyfield, we dig through our deck with Shamans, Dedenne, Marshadow, and we just get a ton of energy into play and start doing, you know, a lot of damage as early as turn one with this deck. But we're also playing one copy of Black Market Prism Star. Very, very good stadium if we can get this one to stick. So the big downside to Greninja Zorak is that it does give up three prizes. And if we can have this stick when our opponent takes a knockout, it's definitely going to be really good for us. So whenever a dark Pokemon that has any dark energy attached to it is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, that player takes one fewer prize card. And of course, uh, things like Field Blower or like Fabus can't get rid of this either. So, like I said, this is going to be really good on the turns that we can get at the stick and help make our uh, Greninja Zorx just go a little bit further. And then from there, just 12 Dark Energy to round out the list. So, you yeah, guys, that is going to be the list we're going to be trying out here for Greninja Zorx. Let's head into some games and we'll show off how this deck looks in action. Alrighty, guys, we have ourselves a game here just going to call it a Coin Flip. Our opponent has a water fire deck box, so this could be like Volcanian. Someone could be like going old school with like uh, Turbo Turtles with, you know, Turtonator, Volcanian and all that. So let's we'll see what it's going to be. That would actually be a cool matchup, kind of like two like old school style decks going up against each other here. But of course, we're updated with the new Zora Ninja, not the old Darkrai. So let's we'll see what this is going to be. This opening hand is okay. Luckily, we do have a compressor to go with this first seeker to bail our hand out here. And okay, that's that's a little bit interesting. We have Vulpix and Charmander. So this is some sort of Charizard deck. I'm assuming it's going to be the Charizard from Team Up, which actually would be kind of scary because Charizard's actually really good at taking like one-hit knockouts on GXs. So it, I mean, the good thing we have going for us is that we are going to put on a lot of early pressure, and we can probably grab a few prizes before they get set up. So that's going to be really where we can, I think, capitalize here. Here we're just going to compress her, just trying to think what we get rid of. Might even put like Guzma in here just because we might want to kind of target down some of these low HP basics pretty quickly. Uh, I'm not going to put any Dark Energy in the discard just because we can, uh, you know, play down our hand a little bit here. So we're going to get rid of those two Dark Energies. Maybe just go for another Zora Ninja and then just end. Kind of want to save like uh, this Dowsing Machine for when we might need it. You usually don't want to throw your A spec away, just kind of unnecessarily if you don't have to. So we can just go ahead and Dark Patch. And we can just go ahead 
and N. And so I don't mind putting N in the discard either, just because after our opponent uses Beacon, uh, we can also use N if we don't want to or can't find Marshadow as well. So we have a kind of a half decent little hand here. We can attach to the active potentially, or we could even just like Ultra Ball and keep digging. But honestly, I don't really mind our hand, like just kind of keeping it a little conservative. So here we have the Dark Patch. We could go ahead and let loose, but our opponent is going to beacon next turn no matter what. So I want to just save the Marsh Shatter for then if possible. So we're gonna see another Vulpix hit the bench, another Charmander, okay. So kind of what my game plan here is for the next turn, uh, we can go, once our opponent uses Beacon, we can Guzma up Charmander, definitely the one with the Choice Band, and then let loose behind them and uh, get rid of the Pokemon that they put into their hand as well. Because if they are able to ever set up, I think we actually just lose, just because Charizard, like I said, is really good at taking knockouts on GXs. Okay, so we definitely, yeah, we did put Guzma in there, just double checking. Uh, we are gonna go for that. So we're definitely going to target down the Charmander with the Choice Band for sure here. And I think we just attach and let loose. Kind of want to keep the Ultra Ball in our deck just in case we need to uh, use one to get a Shaman or something like that. And here I might even just like sit on this hand potentially. Well, I guess we could play the Shaman just in case they play like a Wobbuffet or something weird like that. But honestly I'm fine. I think just going for Dark Pulse... Like, if we don't need anything, i rather not put the, the Shaman down. So here we can just go for Dark Pulse and take a knockout on Charmander. And then we can hopefully find ourselves another Guzma for next turn as well. And we find ourselves a Chorus. Not going to be too important at this point in the game. Like I said, we're going to be really just looking for Guzmas or Ends at the very least. So here we're going to see a Nest Ball. Probably see another Charmander come down if I had to imagine. I'm not sure what else our opponent plays. They could play some other sort of attacker. Okay, but here they're going to go for a Jirachi. I'm actually fine with that. And interesting. So really not sure about that. Like, I think if I'm in their position, I'd rather just Beacon. You just Nest Ball, another Charmander, or Beacon. But if they have... It could be bad if they have two Charmanders prized. That would be pretty bad. And they might be thinking, well, I need to maybe find Stretcher here. I'm assuming that's kind of why our opponent is like switching gears and going for the Jirachi. Oh, but they do not find another Charmander. So that's going to be a pretty big opportunity for us to kind of capitalize on. So uh, we definitely, I think, get rid of the Colrus. Might even just get rid of the... It could get rid of the Dark Energy, but I think I want to get rid of the Zora Ninja and play our hand down a little bit lower. So here, what do we go for? Um, I think I might just go for the Pseudo Widow. There's not really too much else I would want to prioritize. Like, we could go for the Baby Veltal, I guess, as well, but I think Pseudo Widow is going to be one of the better targets here. So we're going to do that. And I think we attach the Pseudo Widow that way. Pseudo Widow and Marshadow are both in energy away from retreating uh, without Darkrai EX, just in case our opponent goes for a Guzma or something like that. So here we're going to set up. Let's see. And okay, we do find the Verse Seeker, so that's actually really big. So now we can just go Guzma. And bring up Charmander. Get that guy out of here. <laughs> and uh, let's see. I guess we just compress her. We get rid of Mr. Mime. Probably not going to need that. And we get the victory screen. So definitely seems appropriate. You know, we took out their only potential attackers that were in play. And, uh, you know, Zorn is going to take pretty commanding. A little early victory against the Charizard deck. But here we're going to try some other games. And we do lose the coin flip, but not really too worried. Uh, Zorn is actually pretty good at uh, putting on early pressure. So not the end of the world. And here this is actually a pretty workable hand. We have, I think we lead with... Uh, I guess Darkrai EX would be fine. I think Sudowood is also fine, too. So, we'll lead with that. Also, we probably should have actually led with the Darkrai, because if we're going to attach to one of these Pokemon to retreat, I'd rather it be a potential attacker. So, yeah, I definitely messed it up. Like, I don't know how impactful it's going to be. We're trying not to attack with Darkrai EX if possible. Uh, but, um... 
Yeah, definitely should have started with that. And here it looks like we saw some Swablus, and our opponent might be pulling Noivern. If so, I am ecstatic about this. I'm a huge fan of the Noivern deck. I played at Virginia Regionals uh, last season. <laughs> so if our opponent is playing that, I will be ecstatic. Even though it's like a really annoying deck to play against, it's uh, I got some love for Noivern GX. It's like the best GX that really like never has had a great chance to shine. But it's definitely a lot better in expanded format. They have double dragon energy, stuff like that. This could even be like Altaria GX potentially. Because that would make sense for them to play the Swablus. But let's see what they're going to get here off the Bridget. And we see two Noibats. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I actually don't mind this matchup either though. Just because uh, Noivern's really good against a lot of the more special energy oriented decks. But against the like big basic decks that can flood energy very quickly uh it, Neuburn is going to struggle a little bit more unless we have like a bad turn one then yeah i think that's really the only way Neuburn's going to be able to really capitalize on us so here i guess we just throw those away i suppose and we're just going to go ahead and max flixer and okay so definitely want to get that down on zora ninja so get down the belt on both of our uh, dark Pokemon and just Sycamore away this other Dark Ride GX. So a pretty good little Sycamore there. Okay, um, we don't really have a way to attack at this point. So just trying to think, what do we, what do we do? We definitely have to like play down this hand a good bit. So we can compress her here. So if we put down the other Zora Ninja, we're going to have two bench spots left. So I think we're going to... Yeah, I think we compress her and then we just Ultra Ball some cards in our hand away here. So I think we might even... Yeah, we get rid of the Baby Veltal. doesn't seem great. Another Compressor. We've pretty much gotten the value that we want out of those at this point. And I think I like that, just getting rid of those cards. And here we need to play down our hand a little bit more. So we're definitely going to Ultra Ball, I think. I think we get rid of the... I think we get rid of the Dedenne and the Colrus, actually. Well, we actually could toss the Versus Seeker, just because we haven't played any at this point. But it really just depends, I guess, what support Pokemon we want to use. We're going to use a Shaman, and then beyond that, what do we use? And I'm thinking we're going to get rid of the Dedenne, because we're going to like use the Marsh Shadow if we, if we whiff what we need here. So we just need an attachment for turn and a dark patch or max elixir, which really isn't too much to ask for with this deck. So we're going to set up, hopefully we can hit at least one of those pieces. And we do hit the elixir, well we haven't used it yet, but we did draw into it. And nice, so we do hit the dark energy, that's pretty big. So we can get that down, attach to the active, and I think we actually do go for the sky field as well, because we have the pseudo widow. So we're going to get down the Mime, which actually it can be relevant against Noivern. does have like a spread GX attack. And here we're just going to let loose. So this is a pretty oppressive first turn that we have. We're going to limit their bench, limit their hand, and take a knockout. So from there, we can just retreat, put up our Zora Ninja, and just take a knockout on... Uh, but we got the victory screen. That's, that's a bit of a bummer. I actually really did want to play that matchup a little bit more. So, unfortunately, guys, our, our games are getting cut off a little quickly, but we're going to hop into one more and see what we can make happen. So, our opponent is going to let us call the coin flip, and we do win, so that's nice. Uh, I really don't mind going first or second with this deck, just because you can set up a strong second turn, or if you're going second, you can have a pretty aggressive first turn. So, yeah, we're going to start the Dark Cry this time. We're not going to make the same mistake we did last game. Though it didn't really end up mattering, still, you want to start with the correct Pokemon. <laughs> And this hand's actually pretty workable. As long as our opponent doesn't start with like a Wobbuffet or something like that, I really don't mind this hand too much. So let's see what our opponent's going to be playing. Okay, they have a Tapulele. That tells us nothing. So I'm just trying to think, do we put down the Mime? That's really the question I'm kind of like wondering about at this point. Um... We're just going to say we don't need We're going we're gonna to gamble a little bit right here. And so we're going to Ultra Ball for sure. Just trying to think what do we get rid of. 
So I guess we can go for the Zora Ninja. There's also an argument to be made. We could grab Darkrai GX and then Ultra Ball that away with our other Ultra Ball, but I kind of just want to go a little bit aggressive here. I want to get down this Fighting Fury Belt. That's really the, the reason I'm going for the Zora Ninja as opposed to the Darkrai GX. And we're just going to go for a Shaman, keep setting up. So we're going to bench, or I'm sorry, not bench that, but attach the Fury Belt and set up for a fresh hand of six. So let's see what we can get here. And okay. Um, so we're going to Dark Patch. We'll get down another Zora Ninja, and I think we just let loose here. I really don't want to discard the Let Loose and the Sudowoodo, because I, I still don't know what we're playing against, so we might need those. And okay, this is actually a pretty good hand, so we can go ahead and get the Skyfield down. We have the Sudowoodo and the Shamans. That's a really good hand, actually, off of a Let Loose. And I don't know how we even played a supporter. I, I don't think we have, actually. Okay, so here we can Max Elixir. So here we Ultra Ball. We'll get rid of the Sycamore and the Dedenne. That's fine. We're going to thin a Pokemon out of the deck before we use this Elixir. So, yeah. Kind of our game plan here is we're going to... I think we can get... It depends. What are we going to do? Are we going to Sycamore afterwards? We still have a bunch of uh, compressors, so honestly, I might even take the Eveltal here in this case. Normally, I would take Darkrai GX to just Sycamore away, but this is a situation where uh, we have so many compressors, I'd rather get rid of them that way, because we're inevitably going to draw into them at some point. So here we will Elixir. We do Whiff, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's okay. And then we can just first Secret for Sycamore and keep digging. So you guys can really see kind of like the power of this type of engine, very similar to like the Rayquaza GX base decks that have been around and expanded. And so here you can see this is what I'm talking about with the compressor. Uh, we had all of our compressors. So there's no point in wasting, uh, you know, wasting the Ultra Ball search on the Dark Heart GX earlier. So here, what do we get? Um, we'll just get put the Guzma in the discard pile. I think I like that. Yeah, and this way we can still get an energy in the discard with it. And we still have an attached return either, so we can. I think we attach to the Darkrai, and we just retreat into, I think, the Eveltal. Or we could put up something else, but the Eveltal, it's like kind of tanky. And also, depending on the deck, I don't mind attaching to this thing, potentially attacking with it. So here we are going to see a treasure. Let's see how our opponent is playing. Okay, they're going to get rid of a Grass Energy, so this is probably my boy Rayquaza GX here. And this actually could be a pretty bad matchup for us, though. The reason I say that is they have Tapu Koko GX, which can take an easy free knockout on a uh, Greninja Zor arc. Also, Rayquaza GX, just really good at getting a bunch of energy in play and doing a ton of damage. So we'll have to see what they can pull off. Luckily, we did get the, uh, the Suda Widow in play. So... I am going to have kind of like a one-sided sky field, and this is going to limit their setup a little bit. So let's see what they're able to do here. So we're going to see a blower. So getting rid of the sky field and the belt. Really don't mind them getting rid of the sky field because we can toss the shamans, get them out of here. Since they do give up two prizes. So really actually don't mind getting rid of that. Of course, getting rid of the fury belt hurts a little bit. Uh, just because that will keep us out of range of Dragon Break knocking us out. They do need a good bit of energy in play to uh, knock us out. They're going to need six, I believe. Or no, it's more than that because it's 30 times each. <laughs> so what, they're going to need nine to knock out Azora Ninja? That's actually a good bit of energy. So I'll, we'll see if they can pull it off. But I actually kind of feel good about the spot that we're going to be in here. And we're going to see a let loose. Kind of a bummer. I did like our hand. We had a couple supporters there. Energy. It's really all we need at this point. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is definitely a workable hand. So we could go for the N. But I'm assuming our opponent's going to promote the Marsh Shadow. So we... Oh, but they're going to go for the Rayquaza. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm actually probably fine with this. So... And we hit a Verseer. That's really nice. So we can go for a Dark Patch. Or actually, you know what? We, Well, yeah, I guess it's fine attaching there. That'll work. 
So here we can Dark Patch and yeah, we get that down on the other Zora Ninja. And what do we have here? What do we have? Hmm. So right now we're doing what's that? 30, 60, 90, 20, 50, 80? I think it's actually a knockout, right? Just trying to think, do we Sycamore? Like, I'm really paranoid about getting rid of our Dowsing Machine. But at the same time, we really don't need too much, so I might even be content just... Just retreating here and just taking a knockout. <laughs> we really don't need too much. So, yeah, we can just go ahead and Dark Pulse, take the knockout, and, you know, I feel pretty good. Now, like I said, the big thing we're going to have to worry about, though, is going to be a Tapu Koko GX, and... Nice, we hit Elixir and an Energy off prizes. That's really good. So, Tapu Koko GX, I'm assuming they do play it. They can take a free one-hit knockout. But after that, I think... I honestly think we're going to be too far ahead because we can take the return KO. And then we're getting rid of three energy right there. And they're just having kind of, I think, a tough time keeping enough energy in play to scale up to 250 here. Here, opponent is going to go for a Guzma. I'm fine with that. And, oh... And if we see a Tempest GX, I think we just win. Like, they, they, they have no win conditions at, the, at this point. So our opponent is going to discard their hand, draw 10. I mean, sometimes you have to do it, you have to do, but... Yeah, that's... I think that was going to be their only potential win condition here. So, we just attach to Pseudo Widow, retreat, take a knockout. Play the Elixir, let's see. We don't have any Dark Energies in this card, so we can't get another Dark Patch. But here we're going to get a Dark Energy, just attached to this other Zora Ninja. And here we'll dowsing. And we could go for like another compressor potentially. Ooh, actually I don't mind getting Fury Bot, kinda like that. So that seems kinda good, I suppose. Since we're no longer in danger of being knocked by Coco, and I guess we could Sycamore. Yeah, we're going to. I think the smart play is honestly to just go is just sit on the hand because we can just guzma for game next turn but i don't really see a way where we lose <laughs> either way here so i think we can play the sky field just to like thin these cards out of our deck so we'll get rid of dark card gx another compressor and a nest ball don't really need that at this point so just just thinking like just in case of an end just want to kind of play out some cards out of our deck but honestly, like I said, even if we, like, even if we get end into, like, a two-card hand, I just don't see a world where we lose this. That's why I don't mind going for, like, the greedy play of just, like, playing Sycamore just as an excuse to play more cards. And here we're going to draw Ultra Ball and Dark Energy. Not great prizes, but like I said, at this point, it really doesn't matter. I don't think there's a card our opponent could play that could make a big enough difference. Um, if they do, like, soften this up with... Oh, but here we're just going to get the victory screen. So, yeah, I think our opponent was just a little too far behind there uh, to make a comeback with Ol' Rayquaza. But, yeah, guys, that is going to be Greninja Zorark GX. Definitely a card I think is a bit better in the expanded format. Now, how good in expanded is, I'm still not entirely convinced. But at the very least, it's consistent. It's pretty hard hitting. It's just a very linear deck, which might be its downfall. And also, fighting weakness isn't that great either. But anyways, guys, if you can, like and subscribe. And like I said, too, a big shout out to Chris Campbell and the rest of our patrons over there at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg for helping make this video possible. If you guys can support this channel by becoming a patron over there or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com, it would be greatly appreciated. Links down below in the description. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.